Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. We have an amazing show for all of you today. We're going to dispense with the normal stuff at the top because we've got bra major breaking news that's happening literally right before we started filming. So we went ahead and scrambled the show to bring it to you as fast as possible. So we're going to go ahead and start with this. The Putin regime in Russia has announced new strikes all across Ukraine and specifically on the capital of Kiev in Ukraine, launching missiles, cruise missiles, and a variety of other uh, air assets against critical energy infrastructure. We have have a little bit of video that was released by the Russian Ministry of Defense. Here you can watch a cruise uh, missile which was launched from Sea Crystal. There are two separate missiles that were launched there. That was hundreds of missiles that rained all across the country of Ukraine that happened in the early hours, Washington time. We have a map actually, we can go ahead and put that up there on the screen. This is a map that just shows you all of the strikes across the entire country. Notably there is the city of Lviv, which is all the way there in the western part of the country near the Polish border. That is the major thoroughfare for a lot of the NATO armaments that are making its way into Ukraine. It's a largely untouched city, it's only been bombed or struck a couple of times. Other places, Kyiv um, and other five different places across the country in retaliation for the Crimean bridge attack that we're gonna be getting to a little bit later in the show. All current indications show that, uh, uh, that they tried to target critical infrastructure. And yet, as usual, you know, we don't have a lot of the footage because things are happening so quickly right now, but it's horrific. I mean, you could see downtown Kyiv in the middle of rush hour being bombed, maximum retaliation against civilians. There was a children's playground that was literally struck, you know, it's supposedly in retaliation. It shows you also that the Russian precision guided munitions are not as good uh, as, or at least uh, they have expended some of their best weapons in the early phase of the war, moving to, uh, to less accurate type of uh, munitions and unfortunately it's just wreaked uh, horrific damage yeah. all across the country and it is a sign of the es escalation in this war that unfortunately is a result of Putin has his uh, you know back to the wall the bridge attack really was a big moment um, for the war both in the way it was received in Russia amongst policymakers also for Ukraine you know came after that warning from the US intelligence community about Ukraine launching uh, extrajudicial assassinations inside of Moscow basically throwing up the flag saying, hey, we know that you're planning something, maybe don't do it. It's possible that this might've been one of the things that they were trying to warn them mm. against doing. Regardless, yeah. we are now in a new phase of the conflict with Putin and others saying the gloves are now right. coming off and all of that. That's exactly right. I mean, for a while now, the hawkish, most hawkish faction within Russia has really been upset with the prosecution of this war. Mm -hmm. They wanted strikes that look a lot more like this. Um, we know also, and we can put this up, on the screen. This is highly relevant. So uh, Russia just appointed a new commander for the war in Ukraine. This was sort of a different approach um, to put one person in charge of the entire operation. There was a lot of speculation about what this meant, but a lot of folks noted uh, this dude, Sorovakin, I'm going to go. Sorovakin. Yeah. Sorovakin. Um, he was known for, you know, he, he's a veteran of their war, the war in Syria. Uh, he is known for being sort of a uh, brutal gloves off kind of a guy. No accident that he's put in charge and then just days later, you have these attacks across all of Ukraine. And I think there's a couple things that we know at this point, um, you know, and this is very early. We're just getting details in about where exactly these strikes hit and what sort of uh, infrastructure they took out. It seems very, very clear they were designed to take out the uh, electricity and water mm -hmm. capabilities of Ukrainian civilians. So reports of outages across the entire country. And then also, I mean, seems very clearly designed to sort of terrify the citizenry. Uh, uh, the strikes in downtown Kyiv, this is something we haven't seen since the very beginning of this war when Russia was successfully, you know, pushed back from those regions. Now you have citizens who, in Kyiv yesterday, they were out sort of like enjoying the last bits of summer, right. out right. at that cafe, sort of feeling a bit of normalcy in their lives. That is now completely upended. And I think it's worth saying we're going to get to more uh, with the, the bridge that Ukraine successfully uh, was able to cripple, not completely decimate, but to, to cripple, which was a humiliating uh, strike for Russia. You know, Ukraine hit what was a critical piece of infrastructure. This bridge was something that was being used by Russia to, you know, bring troops in, to supply their troops. So they're hitting a critical piece of sort of military infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And the response here is basically to terrorize citizens. I mean, yeah. that's really, this is supposed to strike fear in the hearts of all Ukrainians. And, um, 
you know, it's it's unfortunately predictable. Um, it's something that we've been concerned about for quite a while now, as Putin does become increasingly desperate, as on so many fronts, he's been, you know, getting pushed back and effectively losing this war. So the hawkish faction is delighted this morning. They've essentially gotten their way. These are the types of actions that they've been pushing for for quite a long time. Yeah, just to uh, underscore that, Ramzan Kadyrov, you know, the Putin's tiger, the leader of Chechnya, he put out this mo- message this morning, quote, we warned you, Zelensky, Russia hasn't really started started yet. Stop complaining like a sucker and run away before it gets to you. Run Zelensky without looking back. Now I am 100% satisfied with how the special military operation is conducted. So for context, Kadyrov was one of those people who was very vocally criticizing the Russian military and Putin for not taking the gloves off. He is saying he is now, quote, 100% satisfied, meaning, and this also fits into what I think controlled opposition in the Kremlin is, looks like, which is that they allow, all the peaceniks are either drafted or thrown into prison. Mm-hmm. Every Everybody who's the most hawkish, they're allowed to have to dissent. Their piece. And then they're like, hey, we're just listening to the criticism. And that criticism happens to be, we should continue to escalate the war. Now, Putin actually gave a speech early this morning, Washington time, where he specifically said that this was in retaliation for the, quote, terrorist attack at the Kerch Bridge in Crimea. He says that Russia's military had, quote, used long-range, high-precision air, sea, and land-based missiles in the strike and warned he was going to repeat them. He claimed that the targets were military, um, He says, if attempts to carry out terrorist attacks on our territory continue, Russia's response will be severe and at the level of the threats that are facing it. Nobody should be in any doubt. That was on top of a message that was put out by Medvedev, uh, who was uh, used to be the president of Russia, kind of the caretaker in that fake scheme to legitimize Putin as the autocratic ruler for basically his entire life. He put out a message on Telegram also saying that the strikes on Ukraine are, quote, the first episode and that, quote, there will be more. He said that Russia is working to dismantle the Ukrainian political regime. On top of that, President Zelensky actually appearing above ground in Kyiv, making it clear, like, we're not going to be intimidated. He says, we are dealing with terrorists, dozens of missiles and Iranian drones. They have targets, energy facilities throughout the country. Such time and targets were specifically chosen to cause as much damage as possible. And he said that Kyiv will survive um, all of these Ukrainian attacks. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.